Hey guys, Mr. Brian here. Hope that you guys are each doing well um, amidst the uh, COVID-19 chaos that surrounds us. Um, most of you um, are, you know, in quarantine at this point in time. You're at your homes, and for the most part, we stay there um, for the foreseeable future. And that includes our opportunities to get together, like on Wednesday nights, uh, Sunday mornings, Sunday evenings, whatever it may be. Um, the government has told us, you know, to to limit um, the exposure and the spreading of this virus to keep it down to like 10 people. On most of our Wednesday nights, we're looking at a good 25 people um, on, on most days. So this is going to be the first um, of probably many virtual Bible studies in the near future until this virus uh, moves out of the population and uh, we get some sort of a vaccine or something that can uh, people can start to take to help um, ward off the effects of this COVID-19 virus. Before we go much further, um, I want to go ahead and open up this time um, with a word of prayer uh, because, you know, we need God. We need him more now than we ever have uh, because, you know, there is a strong presence of fear um, in our nation today, um, in our churches, and unfortunately even in some believers. Uh, so this is an opportunity for each of us to look at God's word um, and see what he tells us about how we can deal with fear. Um, so before we go any further, like I said, uh, let's open up in a word of prayer. Um, that way we can get, invite God into this time, into this Bible study, um, and just asking him to bless it. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much again for the time that you have given us, Lord. We ask that you bless it, Lord. Uh, Lord, we know this, that this is unique times that we live in, Lord. Uh, there has been viruses in the past and sickness in the past, Lord, that has limited, limited people's actions, <clears throat> what they could or couldn't do in their world. Um, and we're experiencing that again now, Lord. So, um, Lord, but we, um, we know that you are in control, Lord, and we know that each and everything that we're experiencing now, Lord, has, has a, you have allowed it to go because it has already gone through your hand. And, Lord, we know that there is a plan and purpose for even this virus, Lord. Um, and, Lord, I truly believe in my heart of hearts, Lord, that uh, this is an opportunity for the body of Christ to step up and step out and truly be the hands and feet you have asked us to be. So, Lord, right now, as we examine your word, as we spend a, you know, a couple minutes together, Lord, I ask that you bless it. I ask that you be with each of the teenagers, be with each of their families, um, each of their loved ones, Lord, um, some that may be affected, some that may not be affected, Lord. Um, and, Lord, we just ask that you, that you minister, um, not just through us, uh, but for the church at large, Lord, wherever it may be, whatever continent it may be on, Lord, we ask that you uh, motivate the men and women of God to go out and, again, to be those hands and feet to minister to the people that we come in contact, Lord. Thank you so much again for this time that you have given us, Lord. Again, we ask that you bless it, and it's in your name we pr pray. Amen. All right. So, as I said a minute ago, <clears throat> you'd have to be living on a rock or maybe in a cave or maybe just under your covers for because you're scared. Um, but we're living in some unique times right now with this COVID-19 virus. Um, it's, um, it's gotten very fearful. It's very fearful. Um, and so... You know, I wanted to take a, a couple moments in, in my office here, um, or as you can tell, it's the, you know, the cab of my truck, uh, my man cave, I guess you could say. And maybe as we continue these Bible studies, I'll add some new stuff, maybe something to hang from the mirrors or I don't know, you know, to make it a little bit more, you know, I don't know, special or unique or whatever you want to say it. But um, with this Bible study, I really wanted to, um, to hit on the fact of this COVID-19 virus and the fear that it has created. Um, several hundred thousand people have been affected by this virus, and unfortunately, several thousand have passed away because of it. But what bothers me more than, you know, the deaths that it has caused is that fear that I've mentioned that it has sewn into the fabric of our, of our reality right now. Men, women, children, believers, non-believers, a lot of people are held captive right now by the fear that this virus has created. Um, just go to the store, spend a couple moments at Walmart or Kroger's or anything and see how the floors are, uh, the, excuse me, the, the shelves are just decimated. Uh, there are no food. There's, you know, a lot of the vegetables and toilet paper. Why toilet paper? Why of all things toilet paper when it's a respiratory illness? But anyway, I, I digress. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can tell that by just the way that people respond, by the way they carry themselves. Some people are, are, are pretty chill about it and they're not really worried about it. Uh, but you can tell by other people as they as they move about a store or you see them out in public, 
um, that they're bothered, that they're a little freaked out, they're nervous um, about this virus and not really sure how to combat it. So that's what I want to talk about today um, is fear. Um, one of the things that when I was talking about this Bible study and trying to figure out something that I wanted to talk about, um, there was one particular verse in 2 Timothy um, that really resonated with me. And I hope it will resonate with you too. Um, but if you've got your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn it to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Um, this 2 Timothy was written, 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 written wow, uh, was written by the Apostle Paul for the young pastor named Timothy. Um, Timothy was dealing with some challenges in ministry, and Paul heard about this, and he, he wrote 2 Timothy to encourage him. Um, and the one verse in particular that I wanted to talk to you about was, again, 2 Timothy 1.7, and it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, or, uh, but of power and of sound judgment. Um, so, you know, that very first part of that verse, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's exactly right. Fear is not of God. God, you know, there are some, you can have a healthy respect. Um, you know, God says to fear him, um, but it's more of a respect, more of an awe of who God is. Um, but also that fear, it paralyzes people. People, I mean, there are, there are documented cases of people who don't even leave their houses because they are so held captive by a fear of people or public places or whatever it may be. But 2 Timothy uh, 1 7 reminds us that that's not what God intended. It reminds us that, you know, God did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power and of sound judgment. And that comes through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Each and every believer who has accepted Christ as our Holy Savior um, now has the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And the Holy Spirit helps us to just navigate the challenges of life. Um, it is God working in us and through us that helps us to get through that. So just like Timothy, you know, we need some encouragement today. And I, I find how, you know, God's word is still active and moving even today. Second Timothy was wrote, written several, several thousand years ago, um, and yet it is still impacting people today. It encouraged Timothy when it was written, and it encouraged us today that, again, we do not have the spirit of fear. That is not what God intended us to hold on to was this spirit of fear but to trust him and to realize that God fights for us, that he is, a, he is with us, he is guiding us, he is strengthening us, and he's right there alongside of us. But when we start to focus on the fear, we start to doubt God's promises. And God, God's promises are, are just all throughout Scripture. Just, you know, spend a couple moments looking through there and just, you know, or Google it. I mean, right now, since you're stuck at home, um, all the promises of God, and there are several hundred promises that really talk to us about putting our faith and our trust in God, even in times of stress and fear. So, um, you know, we've got to be able to navigate this time. And as I said in the prayer earlier, that I truly believe in my heart of hearts that, <coughs> excuse me, that this time that we're all dealing with, it is an opportunity for the body of Christ to step up and step out. It is a time for the body of Christ to no longer be passive, to no longer be locked in the church walls, but to be out and amongst his people, witnessing, sharing, and loving on, and most importantly now in an, in an area where fear is running rampant, to give people hope and peace um, that God is with us and God loves them. Um, and, you know, maybe you're walking in Walmart or Kroger's or Publix or whatever else, and you see somebody that's, that's just, you know, by, the, by their demeanor and by the way they're carrying themselves that they need some prayer. You know, ask them, hey, can I pray for you? Or, or maybe just, you know, say a quick silent prayer as you're passing them in Kroger's or whatever it may be, and just say, God bless this individual. Lord, I can tell by their demeanor that they're struggling, that they're, they're challenged right now with this fear that's holding them captive, Lord, and we just ask that you uh, you remove it from them, Lord, and help them to, to seek you in all, all things. Um, we've got to, guys. I mean, it's important. Uh, right now, again, like I said, we, we need to be the body of Christ. We need to be standing up and standing firm on the promises of God right now. You know, people are, people are searching for answers. They don't know what to do, and we as the body of Christ, we have the answer. We have the answer, and that's Jesus Christ. So help us, you know, I mean, that, that's what we've got to do. We've got to be able to help people um, 
And, you know, and again, even though we've got this, you know, the quarantine where you're, you're stuck at the house, you still have an impact. You still have access to social media. You still have access to friends or uh, family members maybe putting some posts out there that are talk, talking about how they're just, again, held captive by this fear or they've got worry and anxiety and how you can just by sharing a verse or something can, can share hope um, with those individuals. But I wanted to share one other thing with you guys um, when... This morning, you know, when I was finishing up this Bible study, um, I just needed a break, you know. Um, I'd been working on it for a couple days, and so I decided just to, st uh, to, to get up and kind of walk outside. As I walked outside, um, opened up the door and then kind of shut it behind me, and it was raining. And all you could hear is the rain hitting, hitting the drops, um, the, the water. Golly, guys, I'm sorry. You know me on Wednesday nights. I can't even talk, but I can't even talk when I'm doing a video chat now. Um... um how the water droplets were hitting the branches and the leaves and all you heard was that and the birds singing. There was no chaos. There's there's no people freaking out. There's no people um, running rans crazy in Walmart or something grabbing all the toilet paper. Um, but what I heard was absolute peace, quiet. I didn't hear the chaos. I didn't see any people just running crazy or anything. It was like that. <clears throat> and it reminded me of another verse in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 26 through 24. And it talks about that. So again, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 26 through 34. And this is a little bit longer of a passage, so I ask that you bear with me. So um, let's read it real quick. It says, Consider the birds of the skies. Don't They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? You of little faith. And that, that you of little faith that grabbed me. Uh, because we, we worry, just like today. You know, it takes a virus for all of us all of a sudden that, you know, we just start we just start losing it. We just start freaking out and we don't know what to do. But just like here in Matthew, it reminded us we have a little faith and we need some reminders that God is here. So to finish up the verse, and it says, again, you little, little faith. So don't worry saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? Or what will, will we wear? Your heavenly father knows what you need and when you need them. Don't be like the Gentiles that are eagerly seeking after these things, but seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So guys, that's just, just like 2 Timothy, Matthew chapter 6 is just a reminder to all of us that God is in control. God's got this. This is no different than any other challenge that we may run into. It is still an opportunity for God to show up and show out. He's got this, guys. He's got it all. And, you know, instead of us being held captive by fear, <coughs> excuse me, we need to turn to him. We need to seek him. We need to, to seek his heart and re look at those promises that we talked about in his word and how we can just, you know, resonate on those, grab a hold of those. Um, and share those with other people when we come in contact with them. So I just, again, wanted to kind of run through a couple things with you. Um, but what I wanted to do is um, I'm going to pose a couple questions to you. Um, and with those questions, we're also going to um, put out a group me. Uh, there should have been an email or an invitation sent to your parents. That, so you can be a part of this group me chat so that when we have these Bible studies every Wednesday, that you can look at those and then we can have discussions. You can look at verses, prayer requests, whatever it may be. Um, and you can share those with us on this group me at. That way we're still staying in contact. We're still, you know, sharpening iron like scripture tells us. Um, and we can still be there for one another. So here's, here's a couple questions for you. And tell me, you know, in our conversations right now, um, how you guys are, how are you handling these things and how you, and you're going through the cast that's in front of us. The first one is in what ways have you seen God at work through the fear that this virus is spreading? Um, to give you an example, um, Sarah and I were at Walmart on Saturday. We go shopping every Saturday and have been even since the virus has been going on. 
Um, and as we're walking around looking at some stuff, um, we ran um, into a section where like the lawn and garden is. And they had these things, um, I can only refer to it as like a little metal flower. It sticks in your ground in like a flower bed or something like that and the petals will rotate as the wind comes and they're um, kind of sparkly and shiny and everything. And I pointed it out to Sierra as we're walking by that the price on it was $7.77. And if you don't know, 777 is the name of the number of the Lord. And so automatically, I just kind of laughed to myself going here and a price tag for a little metal flower. God is reminding me that he's got this, that he's in control. $7.77 doesn't look like a, a lot to a lot of people. But that's the thing, you know, we have to be open and actively looking for God's fingerprints. And he showed me one right there for, for, with a price tag saying, Hey, I've got this, you know, this is, you know, this is not outside my ability to control. Trust me, I've got this. So, you know, what ways are you, or what ways do you see God working in this situation? Even though fear is running rampant. So that's question number one. Question number two is even though most of us are in, most of us are in quarantine, how can we combat the spirit of fear that is everywhere right now and replace it with a spirit of hope? What can you do? We kind of talked about that a minute ago, saying, um, you know, like social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is where you see people that are, you know, sharing posts of, of, of just, you know, um, they're downtrodden, they, they're, they're just held captive by this fear. And how can you turn around and share some hope with those individuals? Maybe sharing a Bible verse, uh, maybe praying with them over Facebook or whatever it may be. How are you actively you know, providing hope in this spirit of fear that we see? So that's just something else for you to look at. Um, and then question number three is what verses are you clinging to right now? Um, I mentioned 2 Timothy 1.7 was one that had really already um, hit me and um, kind of just impacted my heart um, is just that don't, you know, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of sound judgment. And it just, again, reminded me that's not, you know, the spirit of fear is, is we need to let go. We need to give it to God and we need to let him work. And so when that spirit of fear comes knocking at your door and, you know, you just have God answer it and let him tell fear where it needs to go. <coughs> Excuse me. Sinuses have been running rampant with all the change in the weather right now. So those are just three three questions that I want you guys to look at. And just a reminder here, the first one, in what ways have you seen God at work even through um, the fear that this virus has spread? Number two, even though most of us are in quarantine, how can we combat the spirit of fear that is everywhere right now and replace it with the spirit of hope? And then third, what verses are you clinging to during this period of time? Let's share with one another, guys. And, you know, iron, iron sharpens iron, so let's... Let's share with one another how we're combating, how we're dealing with, how we're overcoming this spirit of fear. Um, and so that we can we can impact the rest of the, the youth and the rest of the teenagers that are here and that they're that are working with us. So guys, I hope this, you know, I, I know this was my very first video. I've never done one of these before. So um, please avoid, you know, ignore the coughing um, and my voice because of my sinuses. But um Hopefully these will get better. I mean, it is me you're working with, so who knows, right? Um, but hopefully these will get better um, as I get more accustomed to it and more used to it. And then who knows what I might do to my office, you know, that is the truck um, and my man cave, you will. Um, and uh, we'll go, we'll have some fun with it as we do these Bible studies. But real quick, guys, um, let's pray. Let me close out this session um, with you in prayer. Uh, just as a reminder that myself... Miss Gina, Mr. Josh, Mr. Matt, Mr. David, um, we're praying for you guys. We love you guys very much. You're important to us, um, and that's why we're doing this. Um, you know, especially right now with again how many uh, believers and non-believers are, are, are held captive by the spirit of fear. Um, we need to share God's truth uh, so that it can combat that fear that we're dealing with. So let's pray, guys. And I hope that this has been um, instrumental to you. Um, I hope that there is something that you can get out of this. Um, so, um, to get over it, you know, um, again, spirit, spirit, excuse me, fear, um, is paralyzing, uh, and it can hold us, uh, hold a lot of us in bondage if we allow it to, but instead of holding on to that, we need to hold on to the promises of God. So let's pray again. Thank you so much for the time that you've, um, you've stayed with me here. Um, even though it's me doing these videos and it's probably not that great. Um, <laughs> but let's pray. 
Um, and just again, that guys, thank you so much for the time. Thank you for paying attention. Uh, thank you for uh, for looking at these verses that we talked about. And again, guys, this is just this is part one. You know, so let's uh, let's continue to to seek God's heart in all that we say and do. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the time that you've given us. Lord, I ask that you bless it, Lord. Um, this is a, a unique time, Lord, that uh, we are in right now, as I said earlier. Uh, but again, as I said earlier as well, um, it's an opportunity for the men and women of God to stand up and, and to be the hands and feet, to share the hope, to share the love, to share the peace, Lord, that only you can offer. And right now, Lord, our world needs it desperately. Thank you so much for um, for the couple minutes that we've shared some truths, um, Lord, and just be with us as we go through the rest of this week, Lord. Thank you so much for all that you do, Lord. We ask that you just uh, watch over these kids, watch over their families, Lord, just uh, protect them and watch over them, Lord, um, and regardless of the situation, Lord. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for what you were already doing in and through the body of Christ, Lord. And we ask these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Have a great one, and look forward to uh, hearing your responses uh, once we post this video. Have a great one. Bye.